iterative test, six, U symmetry, extrema, and zeros to sketch a graph of F, seven. So you can see all these questions all the way up to 23. They are very interesting. They will test your understanding of calculus. Look at 15, it says find an equation of a tangent line. So you should be able to answer all these questions at the end of this video. Okay? You should be able to use differentials to estimate the square roots. Look at 22. A piece of wire, 100 centimeter in length, is divided into two parts. One part is bent to form an equilateral triangle, one side of sides x centimeter, and the other is bent to form a square of sides y. So calculate the value of x. Determine whether this value makes a maximum or a minimum. 23. Analyze and sketch a graph of a function. Label any intercepts, relative extrema, points of inflection, and asymptotes. So this is going to be a very detailed video. Watch it to the end, step by step. Take your time to make sure you understand every concept. So let's start with question one. Question one says, coughing forces the track to, to contract, which affects the velocity of the air passing through the track here. The velocity of the air during coughing is given by that. Where k is a constant, r is a normal radius and r is a radius during coughing. What radius will produce a maximum air velocity? So we write our equation v is equal to k r minus r and then r squared. Now I want you to understand that the capital letter r is standing for the normal radius and then the r is the radius that is produced during the coughing, during the contraction. So this is what's happening. So after it contracts, it gets longer and smaller. The radius becomes smaller. So we need to determine the radius that will produce a maximum air velocity. Maximum air velocity. So something that has to do with a maximum minimum, you know that we can easily determine when we want to use by just using the first derivative, right? You know that at the stationary point is where we have the maximum and the minimum. So us just coming up with a first derivative, the first derivative helps us determine the stationary points. At the two at the stationary point you're going to determine one of them is going to be minimum, the other one is going to be maximum. So let's try just just try to analyze and determine the the, the change of our velocity in respect to R by differentiating. Of course we are differentiating in respect to a small R because it's on that changes, the normal one doesn't change. It only it only changes during the coughing. So the one that is produced during coughing changes depending depending on a lot of factors, okay? And that affects the velocity. So let's try to differentiate this. So dv in respect to r is going to be let's distribute the r squared so that we can make understand it better. So it's going to be k and then we've got r r squared minus r to the power 3 after you distribute. Forget about the constant k outside. This differential is inside. So we've got a power 2 there times the r is going to be 2 r. Reduce the power by 1. It remains just 1. The other part is the 1 there. It's going to be 3. The power reduces by 1 becomes the power 2. Good, right? Now dv dr becomes, you can distribute the, let's distribute the k for the sake of coming up with a simple one basic equation. So it's 2k r r minus 3k r squared. So we've determined our first derivative. Now our goal at this point is sh we should be able to determine the, the derivative, right? Well, we've already determined the derivative. Now we need to determine the point where the derivative is going to be equal to a zero, the stationary point. So we equate it to zero. We have 2k. So let's just go on and just do things fast here so that we can just differentiate right away without wasting any time. So let's factorize what is common. So we know that r is common. So we have r for the first part agreeing to with 2k capital R minus 3k R. So we've differentiated. Don't forget about the first derivative. Let's put it aside. 
it's going to be Yusuf later on in the question so at that point are we able to find the values of R that's a question so what are the possible values of R so you know when you factorized you can come up with two equations so one is R is equal to 0 the other one is what's in the brackets 2k R minus 3k R is equal to what 0 so at this point we have 2k R is equal to 3k R what's our goal here? our goal is to find the value of a small R so the k is common of course so divide by 3 divide by 3 you end up with 2R over 3 is equal to that's a small value R right okay so we found the two points the two stationary points one is R is equal to 0 the other one is R is equal to 2 R over 3 now how do we know which one is the maximum and which one is the minimum so we have to use what we call a second derivative test the second derivative test helps us determine that so we have to differentiate the first derivative so d squared v over dr squared is going to be equal to again let's try to write the our r so multiply by that one it's going to be 2k r reduced by one it becomes the power zero so we just it will just be r to the power zero minus two times the three is going to be 6k r the power reduces by one it now becomes the power one so the other one it has disappeared because it was r to the power zero that's why okay so we have our second derivative we can do it even pull out the k so we have 2 r minus minus 6 r so we can try to test which one give us a negative which one give us a positive i believe you know that when it's a positive negative and zero so it's a zero you know it's a point of infection or infusion when it's a negative you know that it's a maximum and then when it's a positive you know that it's a, a minimum point that's the nature of a stationary those are the natures of stationary points so if you plug in a zero plug in a zero have is the arrow there so that point will become a zero if that all point will be eliminated so you just basically remain with k to r or 2k r is that a positive or a negative? It's a positive, so it's a minima. Well, if you try the other value, 2R, so K, okay, 2R, you're substituting that we have is this. So that's going to be 6 times 2R over 3. What are you going to end up with? That's a 1, that's 2. So you end up with K, the brackets of 2R. 2 times that 2R is going to be a 4R, right? So you end up with K multiplied by negative 2R, which is basically going to be negative 2KR, which is clearly a negative, right? So that becomes a maximum. So which radius has given us a maximum? It's this radius. So find the radius that will produce a maximum air velocity. So the one that's maximizing the change of V in respect to our radius is basically R is equal to 2. Dependent on the big radius divided by 3, this is our radius. Look at question 2A. A manufacturer wants to design an open box having a square base and a surface area of 108 square inches. So we have a box here what are we told about the box we're told that the box is having a square base okay so we have a square okay something like that i don't know if i've drawn a square <laughs> but the, the, the key important part there is the base is a square okay so if it's a square, and then let's call the height to be h, okay? Now, what do you want us to find? I want us to find the dimensions that will produce a box with a maximum volume. 
the box that will produce max map volume. So the volume is of course going to be the base area and then of course multiply by the height. The base area we have multiplied by the height to give us a volume and then of course we've been given some information about the surface area. Now what's the surface area of a box? The surface area is going to be the base area we have plus the area of the sides. How many sides are there? Can we count them? So one, two, three. Wait, 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 which ones do we have? So there's that side there, one. There's this side two. There's this side three. There's that side four. So we have four. That's excluding the base. So base area plus the four other sides give us the surface area okay yeah that, that gives us a surface area of course in fact I was supposed to say we are focusing on the top part rather than the other side there yeah yeah so how do you find now the the base area the base area we know if we're going to call a side to be x centimeters it implies the base area is going to be x times x since it's a square base so that would be x squared. Now the area of the other four sides, remember we are calling the height to be h. So it's going to be in respect, since it's adding one side part of a square. For example, if you look at this side, you have a combination of the height and also the length of a square. So it's going to be a product of x and h. How many of these sides do we have? So we say therefore there's this one itself and then there's this side, there's the other side there, there's one on top, the surface, surface area. So there's a component of the height, right? So at least we've established what we have. So we've determined the formula for our surface area which can be reduced as x squared plus 4xh and then this is equal to 108 right that's our surface area given in the question now what else are we told we have to find the maximum volume right maximum volume so let's try to come up with a formula to express our volume so volume is going to be the base area is of course x squared and then multiply by the height, the height, let's call it h. So we've come up with two equations. So we're trying to find the dimensions that will produce a maximum volume. So at the, the goal here is to end up with only a single formula where we only have v as a subject so that we can easily determine its derivative and then try to determine the maximum point, the, the point where we're going to have a maximum value, right? So in the second equation, therefore, we can work on our h, we can make it the subject so that we substitute in the other equation. So if you make h a subject, you're going to have 108, this goes the other side, it becomes a negative. And then you have the 4x attached, so divide by the 4x. So at that point you've made h a subject. You can make a step further by trying to divide by the, the 4x we have. So 108, you can divide it by the 4 if you want. So 108 by the 4, 4 into 10 should be 2. Remember, one, remember 2. 228 is going to be how many times? 7. So I have 27 over, since you are dividing by 4x, x remains. And the other part, x squared by the x will cancel. So I have one x on top on the bottom remain with it just a 4 after dividing each by 4x now we are tribute of now substituting in the equation so where we have h we'll just put our x 27 over x 
So it's actually just, it was actually going to be very okay, even without dividing the x. We just give ourselves a necessary work. Okay, anyway, let's just go on. So of 27 over x minus x over 4. What can we do? Our v is equal to the x will cancel out so that you have 27 x. The other part, it will be x to the power 3. It will not cancel out. Okay. So we have now our volume expressed in terms of the base length. Okay. Which is x. So at this point, I think we're now able to differentiate. So differentiating our volume in respect to the dimensions of a square length we're going to have 27 for the first part the other part is going to be 3 times that's going to be 3 over 4 the power reduced by 1 it becomes 2 right so we've differentiated now if we're trying to maximize it implies we're trying to determine the point where the derivative is going to be equal to 0. So if we are going to have to be equal to 0, 27 minus 3 over 4x squared equal to 0. At what point is that going to be equal to 0? So what do we do? So you are going to remain with 27 this side, the other side you are going to have 3 over 4x squared. Okay. Preserve this for some later job. So multiply by a reciprocal, 4 over 3, 4 over 3, this and that will cancel out. So remain with x squared equal to 4 times 27. 27 plus 27 is going to be 54. This is 54, yeah, 54. And then times 2. I think that should be give us, should get us back to something like one zero eight, but instead of doing that, instead let's divide by three. Three there, it's one. Three there, it's going to be with nine. Yeah, nine times four. Nine times two is eighteen. Times two, thirty-six. So we have thirty-six. Okay. So we can try to find the value of x by determining the square root. So it will be plus or minus root of thirty-six. So our x is plus or minus six. So we've determined two values of our x. How do we know which one is the maximum? Which one is going to give us a minimum? We don't know. So we can use a second derivative test. Okay, can use a second derivative test and see. But if you look at this, the reason why we are not going to even go for that is if we look at what we had here, if we look at the sign there, the sign is negative. Whenever the sign is for the x squared part is negative, it implies what you're going to have. Since this is a quadratic function, there's no need of you to go for the second derivative test. You can even actually you know that you're going to either have a minimum or a maximum. So only one, one answer is valid in this case. Okay? It's either a maximum or a minimum for a quadratic. So therefore, in a case where you have got a negative sign, you, what you have is a maximum. Okay, you should know that right away. So in this case, it's a maximum. So now, since we're dealing with dimensions, obviously the positive value is the value that's going to be valid. So positive 6 will be able to give us a maximum, maximum volume of a box. Okay. So now, where did we come from? Don't forget about our formula for the H. So this is for the length, right? So x is equal to that. That's the length. And then for the height, we say the height. We gave. A, we came up with a formula which was saying 27 over x minus x over 4. So you can plug in the value of 6 there. So 27 over 6 minus. 6 over 4. Oh, we can go direct, go back to even previous form, which was 108 minus x squared, which is 36 in this case, over 
4x, 4 times 6. Whichever is easier for you. Anyway, I'm having a calculator right away, but let me just use it. So 108 minus 56 divided by 4 by 6, right? 3. 3. 3 is what I'm getting. 3 into 27 is 9. 3 there is 2. 2 there is 2. 2 there is 3. 9 minus 3 is is 6 over 2, 3. So our height is 3. So we now know the dimensions of our box, right? So our L is equal to 6, our height is equal to 3. Those are the dimensions of our box, which will produce a maximum volume. Uh, we'll continue from 2B now. A has to determine which points from the graph of y is equal to 4 minus x squared are closest to the point 0 comma 2. Okay, so this is very simple. So it's like on an x or y plane, you know you've got a point 0 comma 2 somewhere, right? And then they want to determine the sh shortest distance to a graph. This is a quadratic function, it's negative, this is maximum. So if argument is sec less, say maybe it's something like this. Maybe like this. You want to determine the closest point, right? So that would imply any point on the graph to that point, the shortest distance. So for us to basically answer this easily, we can take the coordinates. We know that this one we are given 0, 2. Now on the graph, since we don't know which points it is, we can just put x and then y, right? Let's do that. Now we know a distance formula from our coordinate geometry that the distance between two points is given as the square root of x squared minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So the square root of this is what gives us the distance. Okay. So forget a minute about the square so that we can just, just make our computations easier. So our distance squared is equal to, <coughs> now we said, let's say for our graph, let's take the points to be x comma y for our graph. And then the other coordinate has been given to be 0 comma 2. So we can take these ones to be x2 comma y2, then the other parts to be x1, y2, right? Let's, let's handle it in that way. In such a case, what that implies is our x2 is 0, our x1 is x, and that is squared plus our y2 is 2, and then our y2 is y. Now, if you check our graph, it's very important to understand that our graph is y is equal to 4 minus x squared. So we can just put it in that form directory. So it will be 2 minus 4 minus x squared. That is representing the y value for the graph. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does. So we've substituted in our equation there. Let's try to simplify, to simplify everything a bit more. 0 minus x squared remains minus x squared is going to be positive x squared. In the brackets you have 2 minus 4 and then plus x squared after I distribute the negative whatever is in the brackets and then you notice that 2 minus 4 gives you a negative 2. It gives you a negative 2. Remember this is all squared. I just omitted a square there. So I have negative 2 plus x squared to the power 2 which you can expand, okay? Negative 2 times negative 2 give us a positive, right? Positive 4. Negative 2 times that comes twice to be negative 4x squared, and then that will be x to the power 4. Okay? Some of you understand what we've done there. Just this comes twice multiplied by itself, right? 
So if we're going to arrange them in a order that's more understandable, x and that can subtract, give us a minus 3. So I have x to the power 4, minus 3x squared plus 4. We finally come up with a cubic function. This is d squared. So just using the distance formula, we are now have our d being equal to the square root of, I can now put by square root, so that's x to the power 4 minus 3x squared plus a 4 there. Simple. Interesting, right? So what are we trying to do here? Let's not forget our goal. The goal here is to determine the the points on the graph, implying we come up with a coordinate x comma y on the graph, which are going to be or which is going to be the closest to the point zero comma two. Now so far we've come up with an expression that is giving us a distance. We've come up with an expression giving us a distance in terms of x. This is a distance between any point on the graph and zero comma two. Now the smallest of course we understand that from our calculus, we know that if we were to get the smallest value from any function, it implies we just have to differentiate it. Differentiate it, determine the stationary points or the critical points. Okay? It will give us a maximum the minimum values. Right? So, the smallest value can be gotten here if we can get the smallest value under the square root, right? Okay? So if the radical can give us the smallest value, then we are able to find the shortest distance. So let's try to find the critical values of what's under the radical. So let's try to look at what we have. So if we call that f of x, x to the power 4 minus 3x squared plus 4. So the first derivative is going to be 4x to the power 3 minus 6x. The constant disappears, right? So let's try to determine the stationary points. So fact out what's common in this case. 2x is common. You mean if 2x squared and then minus a 3 there. So equate that to 0. At that point is the first derivative equal to 0. So there are going to be possibly two solutions. 2x is equal to 0 implies x is equal to 0. 2x to the power 3 is equal to 0, so it will be equal to 3. x to the power 3. How is that the power 3? It's the power 2. So 2x squared equal to 3. x squared is equal to 3 over 2. So we have two possible values from that side. So x is either plus or minus root 3 over 2. So we've come up with two values there. Don't forget the two values. So one, there are actually three values. X to the power 0 or plus or minus root of 3 over 2. So we've come up with three points. Now we're trying to determine the ones that will give us. The one which is going to give us the smallest distance. Smallest distance. Let's try to see what we can do here. We can use the second derivative test to test. So we can determine the second derivative from our expression. So that's going to be 12x minus a 6. If you plug in a 0, you're going to get a negative 6. So that implies 0 gives you what? A maximum. Okay, so it gives you a maximum value under there. Now, I want to get the minimum. One should going to give us a minimum point, minimum value. Let's try to test the other two. If you try the positive 3 over 2, 2 into 12 is going to be 6 times 3, 18 minus 6. So, even without computing, you know that that's going to be a positive value, right? There is a positive value. Yeah, let's not forget. I don't know. I forgot. This is squared. The power reduces by one, so it will be squared instead. So, I beg your pardon there. So, even if you try a zero, it still remains the same anyway. But for this other one, 
you have 12 and then you have a 9 and then you have a 4 4 there becomes 3 3 times 9 you know that's 27 minus 6 gives you 21 so 21 is a positive value now you know that whatever value you're going to put over it's positive or negative the fact that this is squared it still remains the same so expect to get the same value even after putting the other point so all the other two points are going to give us minima because they're giving us a positive value in the second derivative okay so they can both they are all going to give us the same result when you put them under the radical there so those two points are possible I've got the ability to produce a minimum or the shortest distance from the graph so how do we now determine the actual points so since we've got the x value there we can easily get the y values how where do we substitute where do we substitute for us to get the value so go back to the original expression okay go back to original expression so x is equal to so we can start with the first one 3 over 2 before we look at the negative 3 actually the root let me not forget to square root okay so uh, let's try to substitute how y was 4 minus x squared so if we substitute 4 minus root 3 over 2 squared we're going to have 4 minus 3 over 2 the square root and the square will just disappear 2 times 4 is going to be 8 minus 3 5 over 2 now since this is a square whether we put a negative or a positive they will still give us the same value so we end up with the same y value so the two possible points are root 3 this square root applies to everything as a fraction root 3 over 2 comma 5 over 2 or negative root of 3 over 2 comma 5 over 2 so these are the two points and this is actually true I think this is going to be some, uh, this is possible in a guess why it's symmetrical about the y-axis okay so whether you go to the left of the positive side of equal distance they are both closest to that point since this point is actually been on the y-axis makes sense let's look at c c is very interesting as well what is c saying 100 meters of wire is to be used to form a square and a circle how much of the wire should be used for the square and how much should be used for the circle to increase the maximum total area <laughs> interesting right so we want to come up with a square the square plus a circle should be able to form they should be able to what 100 meters 100 meters 100 meters of the wire so you know that the length of a square the length for this we call them the perimeters right so a perimeter of a square it implies you add the length of both sides which are of course the same so it's going to be 4l and then you know for a circle it's 2 pi r perimeter okay or pi d we use radius here so that's our first equation now the other equation they want us to ensure that we have the maximum total area so the area of uh, the area of the square is going to be l times l which is l squared the area of a circle is pi r squared and then the this is equal to the area anyway <laughs> yeah so I want to come up with an equation of course of course when it comes to the issues of maximum maximum we're trying to focus on the maximum total area so the only equation we're interested in is the one for area how do we maximize it 
we use application of differentiation. So what happens, we have to come up with an expression in the other equation that will allow us to substitute in the other equation. So I would rather deal with the radiuses here, right? So if we make L the subject in the other equation, it's going to be easier to compute. So 4L is equal to 100 minus 2 pi R divided by 4. So our L becomes 100 minus 2 pi R over 4. We've made L the subject. We can gradually substitute what we have in the area equation. So where we've got our L, we're going to have 100 minus 2 pi R over I4. Now don't forget this is squared plus pi R squared. This is equal to our area. Okay. So we've come up with our area expressed in terms of the radius. We don't have air over there. Now for us to determine the maximum area, you know we have to differentiate, right? We have to differentiate. That's very key, very important. So differentiation will help us determine the maximum and the minimum values. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. So let's go on and differentiate this. Since the value we have is R as the other value, remember a pi is a numbers, right? So we only have A and R in this case. So we can differentiate. So that would be dA and then d radius so pi r squared differentiating that two times the pi is going to be two pi the power reduces by one it just becomes two pi r now this other part you want to be very careful we are supposed to apply the chain rule since we've got something in the brackets look at it we've got something in the brackets so multiply by the two there so you have a two and then 100 minus 2 pi r remains in the brackets. Reduce the power by 1, it remains, becomes the power 1. Now we have to multiply by the derivative, whatever is, is inside when you're applying the chain rule. What is inside there is you have 100 over a 4, and then minus 2 pi r over a 4. 2 there it's 1, there it's a 2. I'm just trying to simplify it even before we differentiate. So we have pi r over a 2. This is as a constant. If we differentiate it, it will disappear. This is the power 1, so it will be negative pi over 2. The power reduces by 1, R1 one minus 1 is to 0, so in short, the R disappears, so you end up just multiplying by pi over, over 2. <laughs> so we've differentiated there at that point. Okay, so let's try to just simplify things so that we can just have one simple basic equation that we can easily understand. So we can just go on directly. Two can be multiplied by that part, so that is one expression. Now you can see that that can just like divide, right? Even I can even just cancel it from that point. So this and that can just divide, and then distribute the pi pi times 100, you're going to have um, 100 pi minus 2 pi squared r. Of course, each of these is divided by 4. Where does that take us? Um, we're going to have 2 pi r, and then for the 100, so the 100 divided by, in fact, I don't know how you omit it. There's supposed to be negative here. If you remember what we had when differentiating there, we had negative 2 pi r over 4. This gave us, it gave us a 2. So it was supposed to be a negative there. Yeah? So if you distribute the negative, this part is supposed to be negative and that part becomes positive. Sorry for that. So divide by the 4 of the 25 minus 25 pi 
the other part you have going to have the idea it's a positive right you can see it's a positive so we have a hundred pi divided by four you just give us a minus 25 and then for it's going to be pi squared r over a two Can we make this any better? Can we simplify it? So I think we can, we can, we can actually make it simpler than it is right now. But even if we end here anyway, it's fine. Now, let's not forget our goal. We've come up with an expression where we've differentiated now our area, and this is what we've gotten as an expression. Now I want to get a point where we're going to have a maximum area, maximum area. So let's try to determine the point where the derivative is expected to be equal to zero. We determine the stationary points, stationary points. So <coughs> it would be easier if we can fact out the error that we have. So let's have what we have. So let me start with this part, which is pi squared. So pi squared r over 2 plus 2 pi r and then minus 25 pi. This fact out the r, we see what we're going to remain with. Fact out the r, you remain with pi squared over 2. That's just a constant. And then there, we're also going to remain with just 2 pi and then minus 25 pi. So the only value I have here is r. Everything else is like pi, pi, pi. So those are constants, right? <laughs> now, how do we go about it here th from this point? We're trying to determine the points where um, this is going to be equal to zero. So you equate the entire expression to zero to see where we can get the maximum point, right? So we have error pi squared over 2 plus 2 pi equal to 25 pi. We are making our subject, so divide both sides. So we have 25 pi over pi squared over 2 plus 2 pi. So you've actually made our subject and you found a point where you expect this expression to be equal to 0. Of course that point gives you the maximum value of the area now ideally if you look at the expression that we had even before differentiation if you noted something you're able to see that we had r squared as the highest power so that would imply that's uh, a quadratic right so it's very easy quadratic you know that when you're dealing with a quadratic when you look at the, the sign it's it's either going to be a negative it's either it's going to be a, a, a a parabola, which is either going to be a small or a front, okay? Whether it's going to be a maximum or a minima, so it's only there are only two possibilities. So now in this case, right away we know this is the maximum, okay? Now to be a good student, you want to go on and even actually compute. Grab your calculator, plug in the values of pi, and see what you're going to get there, okay? So the radius that I'm getting on my calculator is something like 7.00123 meters. Don't forget that we came up with an expression that was expressing our L in, in terms of R. So it was 100, came from the perimeter equation, right? So if you plug in there our value of a seven point something and then our pi as well you end up with something like fourteen point zero zero something so this is basically what we do. this is where we are ending now to prove this is just to add up right so the y that is going to be used of a square remember our equation we said it's four L the perimeter of a square and then of course the perimeter of our our circle is two pi r now for L, ideally the value is 
4 times L, right? Now our L, we're finding something like 14. If I'm going to take it to two significant figures, and then for our radius, our radius is something like what? 7, right? 2 pi times the 7 that we had there is approximately something like 44. Now the 4 times the 14 we have is something like 56. Now 56 plus 44 is 100. So the idea is this is actually adding up to 100 meters that we were given to use to come up with a maximum enclosed area. Okay. So this is application of calculus. Okay. Interesting question it was. Questions from calculus story sheet three. So most of these questions are focusing on the application of differentiation, that part of calculus. So let me show you the questions we're going to answer in this video. So check Starting from question one, question one is saying coughing forces to the trachea to contract, which affects the velocity of the air passing through the trachea. The velocity of the air during coughing is that. So where k is the constant, r is the normal radius for the trachea, and r is the radius during coughing. What radius will produce a maximum air velocity? The manufacturer wants to design an open box having a square and surface area of 108 inches. What dimensions will produce with a maximum volume? So you've seen most of the questions application. Look at 3B, it talks about the absolute extrema. Look at 4, it talks about the increasing or decreasing functions and also sketching them. 5, looks at the first derivative, second derivative. All right, so 2D now. Find two positive numbers that satisfy the given requirements. The product is 147, and the sum of the first number plus three times the second number is the minimum. We just go on and do that. Find two positive numbers. Two positive numbers. So the first one, the product. So let's take the numbers to be x and y, right? Okay. So the sum of the product is 147. So x, y, which is the product, is 147. Okay. That's for the first part. The sum of the first number. Let's say the first number is x. The sum of the first number plus three times the second number is a minimum. Take note of that. The sum of the first number plus three times the second number is a minimum. Minimum. So I have to find the positive numbers. I have to find these two numbers. Okay. So you now you've seen the point. So why it is a minimum? That is the equation you're going to focus on with differentiation. Right? So the sum is a minimum. Now what do we do here for us to undo it? So I have to come up with an expression that will make the other formula where there's a constant to be a subject, you can make in this case x subject, so I have 147 over y. Plug in, in the other equation, where there's x, we have 147 over y plus 3y. So I have to now determine the minimum value there of our expression. The equation we have y can be expressed in terms of a negative since it's on the denominator so let's just go on and differentiate this equation we can call it the sum so that when you differentiate we can say we have ds dy right differentiating negative 1 times that is going to be negative 147 reduce the power by 1 it will be y to the power negative 2 okay and then that's going to be a 3 when you differentiate. This can be expressed as 3 minus now 147. The y can go on the bottom, so it just becomes a positive value. 
So I have 3 minus 147 over y squared. So we've differentiated now. The, the, the po at the point where the derivative is equal to 0 is a maximum point or a minimum point. Okay? Let's see. This is... Well, let's see what we're going to expect. So if you get that to 0, 3 minus 147 over uh, y squared equal to 0. So you have 3 is equal to 147 over y squared. So you end up with 3y squared is equal to 147. So the 147 we have divided by 3 is a 49. So, on the left we have y squared is equal to 49. So if you try to find the value of y, it will be plus or minus 7, right? So there we are. Now, remember our question was saying we're interested in only the positive numbers. So we're only interested in positive 7 as our y value. So y is equal to 7. First to find the above value, which is x, get back to this point. Substitute. Our x is equal to 147 divided by the 7. What do you expect? 147 divided by the 7, 21. So these are the two positive numbers. That should be able to satisfy the given requirements. Let's look at the other part. The sum of the first number, let's call it x as well, cubed, the sum of the first number cubed to the power 3, and the second number is 500. The product is the maximum. Pay attention to this question. The sum of the first number cubed and the second number is 500. The product is maximum. So the product is, the two numbers are x and y. So maximum. So don't even give yourself a lot of pressure. In this case it's easier to make y a subject. So y is equal to 500 minus x to the power 3. It's not always supposed to make y or x a subject. Look at what's easier to do. Plug in the other equation. Our y. We have 500 minus x to the power 3. So, we can still call that the sum. But our sum is equal to negative x to the power 4 plus 500x, right? That's our sum. We can differentiate that. Okay. In fact, that's a product, not a sum. <laughs> this is with the product. The product is the maximum. So our dp dx, that's differentiating. We're going to have negative four x to the power three plus five hundred. That's what we have. Uh, <coughs> what are we trying to do? We're trying to determine the point where the product is a max man. Where the product is a max man. Equate it to zero. Negative four x to the power three is equal to negative five hundred. Becomes positive divided by the four. 500 divided by 2 is 250 by 2, 125. What, numbers, what, what number can you multiply 3 times to give you 25? That's what a cube root is. So that should be a 5 there. So x is possibly a 5. So we've got a value there. 5. You can find the y value. Remember we're only interested in the positive values, right? So 
in fact here it's only one value because the cube root so third root so our y value we said our y is equal to 500 minus x to the power 3 so 500 minus our 125 that gives us um, 375 so we found the two values x and y for this question right